Hey Desmond Du here. Today we're going to learn how to make a reusable text repeater setup. So let's begin. In After Effects, let's hit Command N to create a new composition. I'm going to create a Full HD 25 frames per second. Click OK and then on. I'm going to use the Type 2 shortcut Command T. I'm going to type a point text and we could start off with maybe the word new pose. Right? And let's uh, go back to our selection tool and center it in the middle of composition. Let's open up title action save and put it at the top. All right, we're gonna open up our text layer, open our text property and hold option and click on the stopwatch. So the, we're gonna write some expression and the expression is S is equals to my text is equals to value semicolon. So what this do? We're putting our source text, whatever we're typing it, into these two variables. And we're going to create in our variable n. So the number of time it's going to repeat. Let's put it for 8 for now. And we're going to uh, write a for loop statement. So for i is equals to 0. No, i is equals to 1, semicolon. Oops. i is less than the number of times it's going to repeat. And then i is going to increment. So i plus plus. And then a curly bracket, and we're going to type in s plus equals to my text, semicolon. So what this line of code means simply is that it's, it's a shorthand for s is equals to s plus my text. And that's it. So we're not going to use that, so let's remove it. And then for finally, let's put uh, s semicolon. So basically, our final value will be s. So notice it's not as repeated itself. And if I were to go to my text, uh, I'm going to hit return at the back. It's going to repeat. It's going to copy new post and a line break uh, and repeat it across. And now if I were to change this number to two, right, it's going to repeat only twice. So to create a better setup, let's go and create a slider control. So go to slider, I mean effect, slider control. And we're going to rename this slider control to num. And then let's select the value of 2 and then pick whip it to that slider value. So right now, so I can now control the number of times it's repeating. I can even keyframe it. So maybe let's start at 0. And then across 10 frames, all right, it's going to repeat it 8 times. All right, so it's a pretty nifty setup. And the next thing we want to do is to uh, kind of as it repeats itself we want to get rid of the one at the top so let's go to animate let's create new text animator we're going to put an opacity and set it to zero and then open up the animator and the range selector and we're going to set a keyframe for the end and then let's put it to zero there you go and then we're going to instead of so as it plays right it's going to get rid of itself uh and let's open up an advance and we could let's see change this uh change instead of characters let's do line and let's reduce the smoothness right so it's just gonna pop on and off let's click uh select the layer click u i mean type in u and then we can maybe adjust this so we see more of the text repeating before it disappear there you go. And now, okay, let's trim it to one second and play that. And now let's alternate the colors for each line. Let's first rename this to shift. And we're going to create a new text animator. Make sure you're not selecting, selecting any animator. So let's select the text property and we're going to drop in a uh, fill color, RGB. So it's going to make everything red. We're going to delete the range selector and add in a selector, expression, and we're going to write an expression to select every line too. So in the amount, see by default we have this, we have this, let's turn off shift so we can always see it. Uh, this shift text animator so we can see all our text. And then we're going to write an expression if text index, right, percentage sign to mod 2. All right, give me this value. So it's going to give me, uh, let's see, a, bracket, a curly bracket. We're going to put in 100 else, curly bracket, negative 100. OK. 
Okay, and see, there you go. So it's basically telling like, if you're line two, if you're, if you're line two, you know, make it red. Or is it like, I think it's actually character one. And if not, uh, don't do anything. So in this case, so we can actually inverse it. Inverse, maybe put negative 100 and 100 here to get it for every line two. Let's go character and change the lines. There you go. Every line two is uh, it's, it's highlighted. And uh, we can now also do it for the position. And we're going to add a drift, right? We're going to drift in opposite direction. So instead of keyframing it, we can hold down option, click on the stopwatch. We're going to type in time times 50. Uh, and because it's a, it is an array, so what we're going to do is we're going to type in the square bracket, time times 50, comma, zero. And close that square bracket. There you go. And then uh, we can create another slider. So let's go to expression control, create, a, create another slider control. Let's rename it as the vel for velocity. And instead of 50, let's pick with it to the slider value. So we can always control how fast or how slow our drift are. Uh, let's change this color red to like a blue or something purplish, something like that. Okay. Very nice. And the next thing we want to do is to scale uh, every second line. So let's do the same thing. Add another property, scale. And maybe we can make it bigger. And But here's, a, here's what happened. When you scale it up, it's also negative scaling on line one. We don't want that. So I'm going to delete this scale property. And uh, let's rename this animator to Alt for now. Command D to duplicate it. And I'm going to rename it Alt underscore scale, remove the position and the field color property, and we're going to add in scale, and we're also going to add in tracking. All right, bear with me. Let's put scale to 120, and then let's open up expression selector, and we're going to change, instead of negative 100, we're going to put zero. All right, so let's see if it works. Yes, basically, it's like saying if it's uh, if it's set line two, right? Uh, scale it up, and if not, don't do anything. So we can put this to maybe 130, and let's increase the tracking value so we have them spread out. Cool. Let's play that. Maybe it's a little bit too spread out, so maybe about 20, 25. Okay. And we also want to readjust the position. So let's drop a position parameter. And let's change the Y so we can center everything nicely. Okay. And now, all we need to do is just add more text to it. Uh, so let's rename this layer T. And I'm going to double click on it. And I'm just going to copy this. Copy it many times so we get, you know, we fill out the whole screen. So new pose, new pose. And uh, yeah, let's play. Let's see, there we go. So we're done. And uh, this setup might be very intricate, but we can actually save it out as an animation preset so we can always reuse it. Uh, so what we're gonna do is, let's see, we're going to select the text, select the effect, and uh, we're going to go into animation preset, animation, save animation preset, and I'm going to save it out uh, here, I have a bunch of preset here, so I'm going to save it out as text repeater demo, right, click OK. Now I'm going to create a new composition, command N, and if I were to go animation preset, your latest animation preset is there, and then I'll click on it. And it's gonna copy everything that I made over here. So if I open up, if I hit uh, EE, which open up all the expression, all my expressions are all there. And then if I hit U, all the keyframes that I made is also there as well. And I'll, I guess all I have to do is just reposition it, position it properly. And so instead of always, every time you create a new project, instead of uh, rebuilding everything from scratch, just uh, save everything out as an animation preset and then keep reusing it 
uh, and uh, refine it as you go. So yes, uh, notice also the effects are copied as well. So that's the beauty of animation preset. And that's all I have for you guys. Thank you for watching this tutorial. See you next time.